This game is rated M for Mature. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Pokeprof, here with something new. Back when I was doing my Psychonauts Let's Play, a few of you might remember that I said that I wasn't necessarily fond of blind Let's Plays, if only because I felt like you couldn't exactly give your all when you knew nothing about the game. I have since not exactly changed my mind about that, but at the very least, I feel like blind let's plays do have their place, and they can be done well, if done properly. As such, I'm going to be going and doing a blind let's play of my own, through this game, Darksiders. A game that has been often described as, well... A bit of God of War mixed in with Legend of Zelda, but for adults, as clearly seen by the sword with faces and skulls and the like on, you know, the title screen here. Now that said, you might notice there is a continue option. That is because I did try to record some of this game already. The footage, because of my new recording setup, ended up being, you know, quite horrible. As such, I went and got rid of that footage, and I'm starting anew. So I know about an hour and a half to two hours worth of the game, but after that, it's completely and totally blind. Honestly, I think this is going to be a good game for all of us to enjoy. So sit back, grab a drink, and let's play... Darksiders Blind. Let's do this on normal mode because I'm not insane to try this game on the hardest difficulty. At least not yet. Since the dawn of time, the armies of heaven and hell have waged an endless war. Drawn to the conflict was the Charred Council, an entity bound by ancient laws to preserve order and balance. It held that any great power, unchecked, threatened the very fabric of the universe. In time, heaven and hell came to honor the Council and its laws, for none were beyond the swift and terrible justice of the Council's enforcers. A fearsome brotherhood known as the Four Horsemen. Amid the turmoil, the first humans emerged. The Council foretold that these weak but cunning creatures would someday be integral to the balance. Thus, a third kingdom was named. The Kingdom of Man. By order of the Council, a truce was forged between heaven and hell. The great pact was bound by seven seals to be broken at the appointed time, when man's kingdom stood ready for the end war, a battle that would bring balance and determine the ultimate fate of the three kingdoms. A lot of plot in the very first, you know, two, three minutes of this game. Which is a bit interesting considering, well, just how much non-plot there is. You'll see when we get a little bit further into the game. But with this, we learn that, well, meteors are hitting all over the Earth. 
Why? How? Who knows? But considering that we're being told about this at the very start of the game, we're gonna expect to see something right about now, I would think. Of course, this being, well, a video game, we fully expect there to be more than just, well, you know, fire and stone and earth within those meteors. Not so much earth or from space, but y y you know what I'm talking about. And out comes from it an armored being that, when I actually first started it, recording this, I thought it was a transformer of some kind. And frankly, I'd rather not deal with Michael Bay again if I can help it. But then, we clearly see that this game takes a little bit more inspiration from Doom, if only from the character designs. And there's a Wilhelm scream. The thing is, it's actually not the only time you'll hear it. But, it's not only the demons that are landing, but a hero as well. Well, as much as a guy that looks like the frickin' Lich King can be a hero. Welcome to the actual game of Darksiders. Basic hack and slash crawler. You know, with, like I said, a little Zelda elements. But it's also got a lot of God of War elements, too. We're able to double jump. We've got a little slice and dice sword here. And when an enemy has a big old B on the head, we can do a finisher move. Now you actually can fight this guy legit if you want to, but the game tells you, well, to activate your Chaos Form. And this being the very beginning sequence of the game, you're pretty much given full access to your Chaos Form without ever needing to get out of it if you don't want. We need to put a Zelda jingle there or something. Just to say, it's like, hey, you've gone taking care of it. You now have access to getting through. But, as the angel said as they flew by us, we are war. We are one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Which apparently are related to this council. As it is, I'm not sure exactly why there seems to be constant destruction and everything. My guess is a fight between the angels and demons, but I know I, I didn't get far enough to where I actually got any explanation of what the hell is going on. But these angels aren't nothing really, especially with us in chaos form. As it is, Chaos Form mode, it's all big and scary and monstrous. Honestly, never had that much fun with it in this opening sequence. Simply because, well... You know, at least when you're in normal war, you have a bunch of different abilities. Here, it's just kind of... Womp, womp, womp. You know, let's follow the Rock Biter. What is happening? And brownie points, if y'all recognize that voice before I mention who it actually is. Which I'll do so in a second. Yes, you can actually pick up cars and use them as a weapon. You can also throw them. I want to actually hit the giant stone dude. I didn't, wasn't expecting that. 
not the only thing you can pick up in the game, but I just kind of find it hilarious that you can just pick up cars and use them to melee. Hey, hey, hey! Let's take care of some of these demons and angels while we're here. Now, one thing I actually note, I'll note here, is unlike later on in the game, um, killing and doing anything to enemies will actually not earn you anything. It's just kind of a introduction to see what's here. We will not kill. Now, I actually don't know if you can actually die in here or not. I would assume so, considering you do have a life bar. But it's actually a pretty large life bar, so... And with that, we are introduced to Demonic Growth. Which is essentially just, you know, the little vines from Zelda that you can climb up and down. But one major difference that I like this between Zelda so far, you're actually able to just kind of rush up the growth whenever you want to. Versus Link, who's kind of stuck just climbing it naturally. Let's go. Apparently the demon didn't like me fighting the angel. But so far the game's gonna be pretty linear, simply because it's just teaching us how to control and just all the special little things that we have. No secrets, no anything special like that. We can actually fight on here, and most enemies tend to die in a single blow, if not more. With this... We are now introduced to the demonic barrier. Essentially, like any good hack and flash game, you will be forced to fight a certain number of enemies. And once you've cleared all those enemies in the room, the door will go and open up and allow you to continue onward. This is actually a good point to go and learn some of your different maneuvers, as well as try to get some high scores. I believe there are achievements connected to how many um, combos that you can do. I honestly haven't looked at it, the achievements all that much, because for me, I'm not so much when it comes to achievements, if only because I prefer a game that, you know, doesn't say, oh, hey, do this to unlock something special. Like, I'd rather it be in-game and not be, uh, like, a Steam achievement or something like that. Now, let's go ahead and ignore that. And Lucky you have a weird-ass glove, dude, because otherwise I think that would actually hurt you. Yes, I know, I have a weapon now. Bring him to justice. Can I target the angels? There we go. And there you go. Your justice is at hand. It is. This game was a lot more bloodier than I was expecting, so considering it's rated M for Mature, I guess I should be too surprised how God of War is a little bit more, well, even more, quote unquote, adult. go this way? Yes, we can. No, we can't. And with all the other ways blocked off, I guess we have to go towards this giant wall. Pick up something while we're going. Well, I'm glad I'm armed with a truck. 
I love the fact that you can actually jump with it as well. Yes! I am the horseman. Not the headless horseman, although with a small but neck up I got. Brothers, this cannot be the final seal. My lord. How did this happen? was not broken! Abaddon! <sighs> what in heaven's name have you done? I... answer the call. Time for the best part. To fight the big baddie, big old demon. Make sure we hit him with trucks. In the face. He'll constantly spawn trucks at us. We pick it up, and we throw it. You pretty much want to keep targeted to him this entire time. And then when he gets low, we slap him in the face with our sword. But if there's one thing that we noticed so far, storyline-wise, is that for some weird reason, we are getting weaker and weaker as we continue this. And according to the angels, apparently something has been going wrong. Where the seal that they talked about, where the horsemen of the apocalypse and the humans and whatnot and every other person fights when it comes to the three kingdoms apparently wasn't broken. Oh, can I throw this again? Or he'll just blow it up and take damage. I'm good with that. I'm perfectly fine with you hurting yourself. Recording I had earlier. Dodging is your friend. You want to pay attention to your enemies' maneuvers, see what they're gonna do, and dodge when you get the chance. Can I pick you up again? Yes. Alright. And always use the quick time events correctly. So 
So apparently we're playing Dark Souls, cause we just died. The law is clear. When the seventh seal is broken, four horsemen shall ride forth to punish the wicked. Be they sons of men, lords of heaven, or the dregs of hell. All upon the earth will be judged, and the bad forged anew. Forget your post, horseman! You forget the law! No call was given, yet the destroyer marched, and there you were found, under his black banner, if the claims are true. To hell with your claims! The seals were broken! I was summoned! Then where are the other horsemen? Were they not summoned as well? The seven seals are hidden, as they have been since the pack was forged eons ago. All of them intact. There was no call. You waited the Dark Ones, broke a sacred covenant that is doomed mankind, and threatened the balance. Do you deny it? When I rode, heaven and hell were already at war. Abaddon was there. He knew something. Abaddon fell, fighting off the chaos you unleashed. I fought powerless against the demons, and still you accuse me? Your defeat proves nothing. Likely the Destroyer cast you aside when he was finished with you. You have defiled the law, Horseman. You will be punished. I serve only the Council. Only the balance, as the horsemen always have. Send me back. I will punish the ones responsible. How? What hope do you have against the Destroyer's armies? You are powerless. Then I will fail, and the demons will have carried out your sentence. So, a couple of cool things to go over real fast. One, these giant heads remind me of the rock guy from Return to Oz. Already scary in and of itself. And two, the voice actors that we've had so far. War is, believe it or not, Illidan from Warcraft. The Watcher we'll get to next time. And with that... I'll actually see you next time. Because I think we've run a little long as is. Take care, folks.